So there's been a phrase that's been um, circulating around my head for a number of weeks now. And it's been particularly um, heavy over the last few weeks. It's become more impressed on me. And um, it's basically fill us up, send us out. And everything I've been talking about, and every conversation I've had, it always seems to come round back to that phrase, fill us up and send us out. And you remember the last thing I preached, I felt God was saying that, are we able to say, here I am, send me? Were we able to answer that? Did you answer that? What's happened since then? When you walked out the door, what happened? Did you continue to say that? Or did that Sunday morning emotion just drift away? Did we take it on board or do nothing? Well, I believe this week it's following on because even when we've said, here I am, send me, and Lord, use me, take what I've got for your glory, sometimes we need to find our focus again. Sometimes we need to reposition ourselves back in what God wants us to do. Yeah? It could be an earnest heart to say, here I am, send me. But sometimes we just need to reposition ourselves, just get ourselves back into the focus, yeah? So, with that in mind, today's sermon. <laughs> in the world today, we can all agree that there is definitely a sense of urgency going on. In the world at the moment, everyone is walking on eggshells. People are, families are, countries are. Countries are suffering, suffering, families are suffering, people are suffering. They've been torn apart and broken, sometimes beyond repair it seems. Some places there's the threat of war, civil war, and it's just looming over them. Or it's already upon them. So it's definitely an edgy time at the moment. Things don't look great. And so because there's this urgency in the world, that means there's an urgency in the church. Yeah? There's an urgency amongst the redeemed, the saved. And that's because all these terribly bad things are happening at this moment in time. Which means one thing. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. You see, the times at the moment indicate biblically, indicate biblically that Jesus is on his way back. He is coming back for his church, his bride. We will be raptured. Spell check, put ruptured, but it's raptured. <laughs> We will be taken out of this world before the tribulation and when we go it will signal the start of it okay now i know uh, a few years ago chris did a study on it the second coming talked about the tribulation but if you weren't there basically it's going to be so bad the seals are going to be open god's judgments are going to be poured out it's going to be a really really bad time and I do not want to be there when that happens at all. See, also when we go, when we are called out, when we meet him in the clouds, our prayers go with us. The prayers that are covering this world, protecting this world, will be gone. So the world's just going to get into an even worse state than it is now. If you think it's bad, it's going to be far worse then. But that is to come, because obviously we're still sat here. And the time of grace isn't quite over. That dispensation of grace, that period of time allotted to this, grace, is not quite done. But there is still an urgency that the time of grace is running out. And so is their grace. Their chance to receive that grace is running out. So again, the urgency is put back on the church because of their urgency. That we need to be getting more active. You see, because the, all, these, all these bad things are happening and it's signalling Jesus' return, the time for excuses, the time for being lazy, it's over. It's urgent now. He's coming. He's not far away. I don't know when. His word says, no man knoweth the hour. 
But all the signs are in place. He's coming again. He's not far away. So it's time for us to rise up, every generation, to be more active in everything we do. So we need to be more active in our witness and our testimony. Are you aware of the people that you're around every single day? Your everyday lives, the people you associate with, the people you work with, the people you're friends with, do they know their time's running out? See, our witness needs to be more active when we aren't around these people, but even more active when we're around these people. They need to see Jesus shining through us. It's urgent. He's coming again. This dispensation of grace is coming to an end. They need to see us act like him, to be like him, to love like him. They need to see him in us because they are running out of time. Is there a person you're thinking of now? A friend, a family? Yeah, unfortunately, there will always be someone you know that needs to be saved. And when I say time for excuses and laziness is over, I mean somebody else will come along and tell them. Don't think like that. Be prepared to tell people. Be prepared to have a witness, a testimony around the people you're with. Chris spoke last week about how powerful your life can be without words. It's urgent now. God's really trying to get his church to be more active in your witness, in your testimony. And your testimony, you may think is nothing. You may think it's tiny, but in the eyes of God, and in God's hand, your testimony is the most powerful thing. Nobody's testimony is bigger than another's testimony. It's still a way that you came to know God. Your route to God may be different, but the fact that you ended up at the cross is the same thing. So you need to be more active in that, yeah? We need to be more active in telling people about Jesus. Not just living the life, but telling people as well. Is that a scary thought? Talking to people about Jesus. Is it scary to turn around and say, I love him? How many people do you know know where they're going to end up if you don't tell them about Jesus or if we don't tell people about Jesus? How many of them know about hell? How many of them know about heaven? The way to get there? How many know that God's wrath is on them? How many people have you told? How many friends or family have you told about Jesus? Not just live the life around them, but talk to them and told them about Jesus. As we said, there's people we're thinking of right now that we need to live right around for their sake. But do you know, it's also your duty to be doing that, to be telling people, to be active in this. It's difficult, understandably, to get up on a box in the middle of Hanley and give the gospel. The wrath of God's upon you, repent, you sinner. <laughs> but that's the gospel message, that's the truth. We were all there at some point. We were all there with no hope, lost in despair, and somebody came and told us about Jesus. We've got to keep doing the same thing. We've got to keep passing it on and keep, keep telling people, living the right life. It's urgent. Time's running up. The rapture's coming. We'll be gone. Dispensation of grace over. And the tough times will come to get to heaven. An amazingly tough time. Are we going to be a people who will be politically incorrect and go against the grain of the world and stand up for truth, stand up for what the gospel preaches, stand up for Jesus? I said, here I am, send me, a few weeks ago. Yeah? That was our cry. Now this is going out. This has been active in that cry. Yeah? To say, I'm going to live my life like this around these people because the Bible tells me to, Jesus did it, and I want to see these people saved. Also to be able to turn around and say, this person I know is struggling, so I need to tell them about Jesus. We need to be more active. We as an individual and as a church need to be more active. We need to be the ones who are more active in our walks, in our walks, in our testimonies, that we can become more effective. Yeah? If we are more active, we are more effective. So time is ticking. 
They are running out of time. We are running out of time. They are running out of time to accept Jesus in this dispensation of grace. And we are running out of time to tell them. So urgency in the world, urgency in the church. But think for a second now, this is a horrible thought, and I'm sorry, <laughs> but you'll see why. I want you to think for a second about someone you know, family, friend, uh, work colleague. Imagine that you're thinking that you need to talk to them. You're not quite living the right way. And all of a sudden they're gone, never to be seen again. It's a tough thought, but it's a very realistic one. I know there's only so much you can do. I understand that. I know there's only so much we can do. But if we don't tell them, they will never know. It's a big risk to say somebody else will come along because what if somebody else is in the same position as you are and maybe a little bit scared to say something? That person will never hear the gospel of Christ. We need to be the ones to break out of the norm, break out the comfort zones that we are in, break out of our inhibitions, insecurities, to be able to talk to someone and tell them what Jesus has done, that he saved them, that one day when we're raptured, they will go with him as well, with him as well. The reason I said I want you to think about that thought is because I've actually, I, I, I had that this week. <laughs> I found out a friend of mine um, uh, uh, took his life at the start of the week. And I spoke to him a few times about Jesus. And um, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe life became too much. Maybe he just didn't feel like he could keep going. Um, but when I heard, I absolutely kicked myself because I thought I was supposed to go see him on Friday uh, to talk. And, and I was adamant I was going to tell him about Jesus. And that was in my head. I'm going to tell him that he can get through this with the help of Jesus. But the Monday before, he'd already gone and done it. But that's how simple it is. That's how quick and easy it happens. Which also stresses more why we have to be the people in this town who will pray and go to the lost. Imagine how many other stories are out there now. How many other people have stood there with a knife or a rope in their hand thinking of ending it. And we have the answer. We are the key. Jesus in us. Imagine the wars that are going on in people's homes. The disruption, the brokenness. And we are the keys. We are the ones that need to be active to be effective. So we said, here I am, send me. Did we cry that out a few weeks ago? Don't answer me, but in your heart, if you cried that out, here's the, here's the next step now to actually go out and fulfill that call. We need to be a church that is prepared to go out to the lost and the broken to meet them in their weakness, not to wait for them to wander through the door. We talk about being a church that's active, a church that's uh, doers, that's go-getters, that get up and go, then that's what we need to do. In James it says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Faith isn't just sitting down and waiting for God to do something. Waiting for God to bring the people in. Faith is about standing up and acting on it. Faith is about believing in what you don't see, sometimes what you can't perceive, and stepping out. I know it sounds daunting, I know it sounds hard, and I know it sounds very ooh, depressing, but the truth is there. We need to be the ones that will step out into this town. Let's get talking to people. Let's get interacting with people. Let's get together as friends, as brothers and sisters in Christ and start putting some serious prayer into this church and into this town or into your families. We are the key. We are the ones that show them Jesus, that bring them to the cross and say, this is where he died. Then we go to the grave and say, this is where he rose again. And then we go a bit further on and say, this is where he ascended. And that's where he stands now for you. said it a few times and I will say it again and I will keep saying it but we need to be passionate about his name about him because then we will start stepping out and telling people because of how passionate we were do you remember when you first got saved do you remember how fresh that felt 
and how amazing it was. The world seemed bigger, but you felt bigger. You felt like you could take the whole world on. Sometimes we lose that passion. But if we find it, and we say, I'm going to go and do this, then we start to see that the drug addict is swapping his needles for a Bible. We start to see a broken family swap their wars for a devotional Sunday morning. We start to see a town that's lost in darkness swap it for the glorious light of the sun. It can be done. Why can't it be done? Why can't we be the church that's centred here in Cheadle to go and meet these people? To go to these people? Not just wait for them to walk through the door. We've got signs out there and we had one guy turn up. <laughs> but we need to be the the, the, the people of God that will go out to them. Maybe knock on the doors. Maybe pray with them. Maybe give them counsel. Be the ones that are out there doing something to support this community, to encourage these people lost in darkness. It's down to us to get serious, to step out in faith, to reach out to the people around us, families, friends, co-workers, strangers to become more effective in our walks, to be active in our testimonies, to be active in our talking and telling of Jesus, that we are more effective in this world and to the people around us and for the glory of God with what little time we have left. There's an urgency about the world. There's an urgency about the church. Let's respond. Let's be active. Let's do it. Let's not just say, I'm going to do it and walk out and that's it. Let's go out and do something. Let's rise up in faith. It takes faith. It takes faith. But let's do it. God will bless it. God will do it. And God will draw people to us. He will bring people in. I'm convinced of that. People were drawn to Jesus. They came looking for him. You read the Gospels. The amount of people that came seeking him for advice, for healings, for counselling. Nicodemus saw him at night. But Jesus also went from town to town. He didn't just sit in one place and wait for people to come to him. He went out there. He was active. Oh, radical, but let's do it. Let's be an active church. Okay? So, a few weeks ago, here I am, send me. May that still be the cry in our heart. May that still be something we keep our focus on. But let's shift now into not just saying it, but let's shift into doing it. Let's shift into being that active church. It, it hit home for me this week how serious this is. When the friend of mine took his life, I've got the outline of the sermon, and then this happened, and I just went, bof, that's, you really are impressing this on your church, aren't you? Are we prepared to rise up? Are we going to rise up? Or are we just going to leave it at the door? It's up to you guys. So I'd really hope you've got something from this this morning i really hope that god's speaking to you if you want prayer to rise up if you want pr prayer to be strengthened if you want to make that declaration then make it you don't have to stand up in a group of people to be declaring stuff to god but come for prayer at the end if you want and we'll pray for you okay